Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we're looking at the 6th grade concept of integer operations, specifically how we can represent them with number lines and with counters, and we will do it in 5 minutes or less. So you have a basic number line here that spans from negative 5 all the way up to 5. But let me draw a picture for you and see if you can see exactly what kind of equation I am writing here. So I'm starting at 0 and I'm moving up to 4. But then when I get to 4, I'm going to go all the way back here to negative 3. And my question is, what kind of equation is this? Well, let's see our very first jump. Our very first jump here goes from 0 to 4. So that's going to be our first integer. And then we move back, and we go all the way back to negative 3. But that negative 3 is going to be our answer. That's where we end up. What we need to do is to see how much we went backwards. We went backwards, and let's count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's two different ways you can write this. You can say you went forward 4, and then you took away 7. So you went forward 4, took away 7. You're going to get to negative 3. But another way to write this would be 4 plus negative 7. And then you're going to get to negative 3. Now this is what is confusing here. Is if you add, typically whenever you add, you always get bigger. But that's if you add a positive. If you add a negative, in this case a negative 7, that means you're taking 4 and then you're going to add negative 7 to get you all the way back to over here. So when you add a negative, it's the same as subtracting. So let me write that for you here, just so you can get that in your mind. Adding a negative is the same thing as, I'm going to write a little equal sign, subtraction. If you can get that in your brain, then you will be well on your way to 6th grade math. Let's look at another example. I've rewritten my number line, so it goes from 0 all the way to negative 10. But let me ask you this, what happens if I draw three jumps, and each of these jumps goes negative three, I go to negative three, and then negative six, and then negative nine. How can I write that as an expression? Well, whenever you think of three equal groups, you should be thinking of multiplication. So I have three groups, but how much is in each of these groups? Well, each of these groups is negative three. So here's negative three. Another jump gets me negative 6, another jump gets me negative 9. So I can write this two different ways. I can write 3 times negative 3, 3 groups of negative 3, and that's going to get me to my answer here, negative 9. Or another thing you need to keep in mind is that you don't need to have this multiplication symbol right here. You can simply use the parentheses to imply multiplication, and you can write 3 parentheses negative 3. That's going to get you your same answer. Now let's look at counters. You've probably seen the counters that are red on one side and yellow on the other side. Well, we can use those to represent positive and negative integers. So if reds are negative, let's say we're solving a problem and we end up with five negatives. Those are represented by the five dots. And we also have three positives. How can we write this as an equation? We can do so by using the principle of a zero pair. A zero pair simply means one negative and one positive cancel each other out and they make zero. So let's pair these up. I've got three negatives over here and three positives over here. So those are going to cancel each other out and you see all that I have left are two negatives. So my answer is going to be negative two. If I wanted to write that on uh, our number line here, we can start with, we have negative 5. So we're going to start with our little line coming over here to negative 5. And then you see we have 3 positive. So then we're going to come up and we're going to move over 1, 2, 3. And we're going to end up right here at negative 2. Or you can write negative 5 plus, we had 3 positive. That's going to get you negative 2.